right, everybody, here we go. And uh, joining the Format Podcast tonight is uh, my good friend, Ryan Langford, who literally grew up in football. <laughs> and uh, he's uh, he's going to be with us um, weekly for the remainder of the college football season. He's going to be the official Format Podcast college football analyst. He's a Big Ten guy, uh, former Fighting Illini, and uh, former Indianapolis Colt, former... Uh, Saskatchewan, <laughs> what is it? Uh, man, I forgot. The Rough Riders, Rough yeah, you got, you got it go. all. Rough Rider, Ottawa Red Black, BC Lion, you, you got it all. You hit the nail on the head there, Bruce. Appreciate there it. There we go, there we go. So um, Ryan definitely knows all about football, and uh, he's going to use his experience and expertise to uh, some, uh, give us some knowledge. So, Ryan, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us tonight, man, it's especially with the NFL season starting I know you probably uh, want to be watching the game, man. I appreciate you. No, no. Thank you for having me, Dan. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. So let's go ahead and uh, let, let's get right to it, man. So um, talking college football, you know where we got to start, and that's with the uh, Colorado Buffaloes, um, Deion Sanders, Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, man. Um, what What are your thoughts on this team? What do you What do you think about, uh, I guess, the, the uproar that Deion has uh, made in college football and what we see from those Colorado Buffaloes so far early in the season. I love it. I've been a Deion fan for a long time. Um, I love Deion. Deion is just himself. Um, and he just really pours into all these kids and these athletes. And then being a former player, you want to play for somebody who's who's done it, right? And uh, when you come into a situation where you have a coach like that who has done it, um, it's easy to buy in. And he's got a lot of players that are buying in. And as you could see last week, they're they're here. Colorado's here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so uh, I guess first, when we when we talk about that team, obviously we're going to talk about the most important position in in all sports, and that's the quarterback position. And um, as a former wide receiver, obviously having a high level quarterback play is extremely important to you. What do you see from Shadur Sanders that makes him so special? He's a playmaker. And he's a competitor. And I think any time that we're in a team, team sport, especially football, um, you want your quarterback to be that guy. You want him to be the one who is competitive, who's, you know, rallying the troops, who's got a little a little something to him that's going to add a little flair to, to, to the side of the ball that you represent. So mm -hmm. I, I think he's a great quarterback. I think he brings a lot of um, knowledge and, and expertise, if you will. And, and he's a competitor. Like, at the end of the day, you know, who calls the plays, or it, it, it doesn't matter. When, it, when the ball snaps, Athletes gonna make the plays, and and I think he does that very very well. Spoken like a true player. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um, I think something that stood out to me. Obviously, we knew how good Shadur Sanders has been on every level that he's competed on thus far, but we didn't know what how good he would be when he hit the Power Five, big time college mm -hmm. football, as they like to say. Mm -hmm. And what stood out to me, oftentimes when you're dealing with African American quarterbacks, uh, especially on the collegiate level they kind of get pushed into this box of, you know, if your first read is not there, take off and make something happen with your athleticism. And watching Shadur Sanders play, at least for that one week last week, you mm -hmm. watched him sit in the pocket and absolutely carve up TCU's defense, right? Now, nobody's saying that their their defense is the Georgia Bulldogs or anything like that, but you watch how he goes through his progressions, he goes through his reads, he makes the throws exactly where they need to be. Rarely right. does he make a throw that's off target and he never looks nervous. He never looks flustered. He never looks hurried. He just sits in there and delivers. I mean, how comforting is it to you again, as a wide receiver to have a guy like that under center or, you know, in, in the backfield delivering the football. It's huge. It's huge. I mean, it's like having a coach on the field with you. I mean, you want your quarterback to know everything. You want your quarterback to have that ultimate uh, balance or sense of poise, if you will. And, He's displaying that. Now, it's only week one, and you can say, like, oh, well, he's got a lot to prove. And, yeah, he, he still has a lot to prove, but he's got the attributes, and he's already shown the leadership abilities and capabilities, and he's he's high on my charts still. <laughs> Absolutely. So now let's switch over to your position, uh, wide receiver. And, uh, well, I guess not necessarily, but we're going to talk a little bit of Travis Hunter, the guy who I believe was the uh, second-rated overall recruit last year was originally right. slated to go to Florida State and then uh, decided to transfer, go to Jackson State with uh, Deion Sanders. Well, not transfer, but decommit, go to Jackson right. State with uh, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders. And then he ended up uh, following him to Colorado. 
And we saw this guy put out an absolutely Herculean effort <laughs> to say the least in that first game. And um, yeah, yeah. The, the snap count that we're hearing is somewhere between 120 and 144 snaps last week wow. in that Texas wow. heat playing defensive back and playing wide receiver. Tell me again, you're a guy who, who did it. How difficult mm -hmm. is it to try and play both sides of the ball at that high a level throughout such a huge game? It's very difficult. It's, it's very difficult. Um, but at the same time, it can be done. And I think what's cool is Dion is giving him a chance to do it, right? Because I think there's a lot of athletes across the country who have always dreamed, like, man, I could do both, go both ways. Just like I was doing in high school, I was good. Um, but in college, there's just a new level of players, a new amount of players that you don't get that ability to go both ways. Um, and basically what he did last week was, was incredible. The only thing that I'm nervous about is can he sustain that for an mm -hmm. entire season? Mm -hmm. Um, because it's, it's, it's a lot. Say what, say what you want. Like those plays add up those yeah. tackles that you're trying to make those, those runs, those hits that you're absorbing, like that type of stuff takes a toll on your body. Um, but I, I love it. I love it. Cause you've always had the idea of, you've always wanted to see if guys could go both ways. Mm -hmm. um, and after seeing that performance on week one against the team who was up for the, 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 the all of it last year and, and to perform, I think that's awesome. Okay. So um, I guess we're going to keep it simple here. How good do you think Colorado can be this season? When I went and I kind of ran down their remaining schedule, I look and I believe that based on what I saw, they have a legitimate chance to win eight games this year, which – would be an incredible, you know, uplift from winning only one game last season and having mm -hmm. literally the the worst uh, roster of all the Power Five teams. How good do mm -hmm. you think they can be this year, based on what we've seen so far? They can be very good. I mean, they're they're going to be as as great as they want to be, and that's something that you preach as a player. Like it's about us. It's about everyone in this locker room. We're not really caring about what other people are thinking, and they got people that believe. Right. You, you get a coach that you can buy in. You get players to buy into your coach. You get one message that you just tweak week to week to make it apply to the team you're going against. And it's hard to stop them. It's hard to stop them. So I'm thinking they're going to have, you know, at least six wins, six, seven wins. I, I think they can do that for sure. OK, so um, here's a question. Now, we know that uh, uh, Colorado is heading into the Big 12 next season. Um, what are your thoughts on what they can do there? And before you give me that, I'm I'm going to tell you, I'm saying it here. You heard it here first. Colorado will win the Big 12 next season. They will do that. Yeah. Texas is going to be gone. Oklahoma is going to be gone. You know mm -hmm. that the recruiting that Deion Sanders is going to be able to do is going to be through the roof. I mean, think about mm -hmm. the amount of commits he probably has secured just based on that first game, right? And we know mm -hmm. that He's no joke. He's assembled an elite coaching staff. What are your thoughts on uh, their capability moving into the Big 12 next season? They, they're they going to be able to compete, right? They're, like you said, it's entirely different new roster. This transfer portal has opened up a whole new game of college football where, yes. you know, you can, you can bring in a whole, I'm going to call it a whole conference of players your, your mm -hmm. following year. And that's kind of what, what Dion is doing now. So I think that they're going to be on, on par to compete year in and year out um you got Dion head of the train again you, you've got the whole entire city behind the team players are coming in they're making play former athletes former you know celebrities are coming in the, the hype is there so mm -hmm. they're going to be they're going to be a competition all right so let's let's go ahead and uh switch it up a little bit from Colorado and now we will take it to your wheelhouse you're a big <laughs> 10 guy you are fighting a line night through and through how do you feel about the changes being made to your conference? I know that when it comes to tradition, the Big Ten is really, um, you know, steeped in that. They're rich in that, uh, maybe more so than any other conference. How do you feel about um, such drastic changes that you see uh, taking place um, to, to the Big Ten conference? Well, I think change is always a part of, of life, right? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I think it is going to kind of change the scope of, of college football. Um, I amazing. just remember reviewing college football and thinking like, okay, these teams are in this conference because they're in this area of the country, um, whether it be the SEC, ACC, you know, however the, it, it was broken down, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. um, now when they're, you know, bringing new teams in and, and the Big Ten's already changed from when I was in there, right? Right. So, um, those two additions I was cool with, but now 
you know, bringing new additions from across country, like mm -hmm. that's, that's a little bit different. I don't see, you know, big 10, the history, the, you know, the, the second half of the season was getting cold, the snow games. I don't feel that when you're bringing teams in um, from, from the West coast, but right. So, so that's the thing that I think will change. I think the football is still going to be as good. Um, mm -hmm. It will take some time for the teams out West to get up to speed with the type of football that I think the big 10 is. Yeah. I was going to um, get to that, but it'll be exciting. It'll, it'll be exciting to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, before we kind of talk uh, a little more about those changes and the acclimation of those teams, and we'll get to that uh, Illinois specific, give me your thoughts on Brett Bielema and what he's doing with your team, those fighting Illini and how good you think they can be with him. Um, we saw, he went down to Arkansas and, uh, um, he was in the SEC for a few years, and I really thought that he could be a good fit down there based on the type of football that he always coached at Wisconsin, being a big uh, physical team on both sides of the ball, pounding the football. But for whatever reason, maybe it was cultural, it just didn't seem to quite fit in the SEC. But now he's back in the Big Ten, first year with Illinois, um, definitely improved them a great deal. What are your thoughts on him uh, coaching your alma mater and, and what they can be? Man, he's doing a great job. He, he's doing a great job. He's done a really good job of just kind of, again, changing the culture. And, mm -hmm. and that's really all that it takes, changing the culture, having the belief, and having guys that are buy-in. Um, the transfer portal's helping him. You know, we're getting quarterbacks from different areas, getting players from different different teams. And um, it, it's it, it's a good – it's exciting to be in a line. It's always been exciting. But mm -hmm. now I feel like it's a lot more um, – we beat Toledo last week. We got Kansas tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, it's It's – He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. I'm excited as an alum. Um, I'm watching every week and pulling for my guy. That's that's what you do. What do you think didn't work about uh, uh, Lovey Smith? We know Lovey Smith, an extremely accomplished NFL uh, head coach, defensive coordinator. Um, uh, what do you think, you know, caused problems with the adjustment with him uh, coaching Illinois? Right. Right. Um, Honestly, I, I don't know. I never met Levy, um, but I do know him a, as a great coach. Mm -hmm. Now, there is there has been talk just naturally being an athlete. There is difference between playing in college and playing in the NFL. Yes. Um, and sometimes, you know, maybe those coaches don't have all of the emotional sides or nurturing sides or different sides that more mm. kids need more as a college kid compared to a professional athlete more so as a as a businessman right. if that makes sense so yeah. that could have been something it could have been just you know translating from you know previous coaches to recruiting there's a lot of different things that come into play but I, I can't pinpoint and say why it mm -hmm. did or did not work if anything just maybe he's used to being in the NFL compared to college ball great point um okay so let, let's get a little bit back to um some some things you mentioned earlier let's get back to that what type of impact, if any, do you see those incoming Pac-12 teams having on on that conference? And I know you mentioned earlier that those West Coast teams, your USC's, your UCLA's, um, maybe not as much your Oregon's and Washington's, but um, they may need some some time to adjust. At least that's my thought in terms of style of play, mm -hmm. the, the the physicality in the Big Ten, um, uh, the right, weather, right. you know, mid to late season in the Big Ten, oh, mid October, it starts getting cold already, you know. Um, uh, right, then right, you right. have in later in the season you have the snow games and all that and when you got you know a, a bunch of track stars like UCLA or USC that gets slowed down a lot when you're not used to it I mean obviously Ohio State's got right. speed too in Michigan but those guys are used to playing in those conditions so tell me what you think about that adjustment period matter of fact you can speak to it very well being a Florida kid who you know went up north mm -hmm. to play ball what, what type of adjustment mm -hmm. is that so it's tough. It's tough. And right. some people embrace the, the embrace it and some people um, change and able to adapt to it. And some people can't. Um, I personally, I love the heat. I used to make jokes with people. Even when I went up to Canada, I was like, man, I'd give up some of my game checks to have it a hundred degrees <laughs> all season long burning. So like I, I'll give it up because the cold is different. Hands get cold, feet yeah. get cold. Plus, being in the stadium, being in the atmosphere, there's a lot of different things that come into play. Um, so I think that it, it is going to be an adjustment. A lot of those teams are recruiting only in the states that they're at, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're getting all these kids from California 
having to go up to Penn State, going to Happy Valley right. in the second half of the year, that's different. That's right. different. You got to go to Happy Valley. You got to go to Ann Arbor. You got to go yeah. to these places where Camp Randall. these kids yeah. have been practicing and living in the snow. Camp Randall, they're used to this type of mm-hmm. environment. Um, but that's where the athletes come through, and and that's what we'll have to see. I hear you on that. I hear you on that. So um, if you had to pick a team, who, who would you say would have the most difficult time adjusting to being in the new conference and, and dealing with those type of things? <sighs> Probably them boys in California, USC probably. Yeah. I mean, that's – that's the, I would think just on – you just look at the weather and mm-hmm. where they're at year-round mm-hmm. and where right. Champaign is year-round and where all these other big ten schools are year-round. Now, granted, they're only coming out there for one game. You got a right. chance to perform, but that that's still a, that's still a challenge when you're not used yeah. to that because you, yeah. you can't prepare for the cold, especially in an environment like that. Right. Great point. Um, and I noticed that, you know, because me, I'm a Notre Dame fan and uh, obviously Notre Dame and USC play every year and alternate the home games. Right. But what I notice when USC has the home game, it's the last game of the year in November. And when USC mm-hmm. has to come to South Bend, they do it in mid-October before it gets cold, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. once they're in the Big Ten, mm-hmm. they're not always going to be able to manipulate situations like that. And, you know, we know why that is. So, not at all. yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, seeing how they have to deal with that. And, you know, like we mentioned, the, those guys are track stars, the, you know, elite offensive teams, mm-hmm. tremendous amount of speed. But I would think it would be things as simple as trying to figure out what's the right cleats to wear. In, in that environment, you know, yeah, absolutely. all those are absolutely. things that you got to take absolutely. into account. Yeah. I mean, I just remember getting the schedule and looking, all right, going straight to the bottom for who we playing in the second half. And is it a night game or is it a day game? It's, it's, <laughs> it's going to be cold, right. but you know, if it's in the morning time, at least the second half is going to be freezing. But, mm-hmm. but if you know, it's a night game in Minnesota, Oh man, it's, oh. yeah, get, get, get ready. It's, it's, it's going to be cold out there. Right. We got a cold one. My sophomore year in Minnesota, that was probably one of the coldest games I had ever played in college, you know, mm. prior to going to Canada and dealing with right. all that. But it's different. It's different. It's different. It's different playing in the Big Ten when it's cold. But that's what you got to love about it, though. <laughs> I hear that. You you might be the, you might be the only Florida kid who's saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You get used to it, man. When You get used to it. I hear you. So do you think all these moves that that the Big Ten is making, um, adding Oregon, adding Washington, adding uh, UCLA and USC, do you think that adding those uh, big name teams from, you know, what will be, uh, I don't even know what's going to happen to the Pac-12, but adding those big teams, right, right. Um, do you think that those moves are going to put the Big Ten on equal footing with the SEC? Because I believe the Big Ten now has the largest uh, TV contract in history. And so obviously that's going to allow for better facilities with the payouts to each team. That's going to allow for a, right. a bigger, um, uh, the amount of more money to hire uh, big name coaches and coaching staffs and, and all these things, uh, more NIL, et cetera. Do you think that's going to be able to put mm-hmm. them on the, the the same plane with the SEC on the field? Um, I, I personally, I don't. Um, the SEC is, is, is elite football. Now, mm-hmm. I do think that the way that the transfer portal is working and, and all these new additions that um, you're going to start seeing more teams kind of evolve, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Big, Ten def- the Big Ten definitely has a chance to play and compete with the SEC. I mean, we used to think that we, we could compete. Uh, we never really had a chance to play, but um, the SEC is, is, is strong football, and mm-hmm. I think it's okay to – admit that they're strong and not mm-hmm. try to even say that you got to compete with them. So it's a different football. It's a, it's a much faster game. I feel like, and, and those guys are, 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 are talented, you know? Mm-hmm. I hear you on that. Okay. Um, so uh, let's, let's move to this weekend and the scheduling we have going on. Um, what games in particular are you looking forward to watching and why? Give us, give us a couple of those. Well, of course, um, I gotta be looking for Illinois. Excited to see Illinois. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, we 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 snuck one out last week versus um uh what you call it? I'm drawing a blank just now. We snuck one out versus Toledo. Um mm. but I'm excited about that. 
Um, I'm trying to think who else is, is playing this week. Um, shoot. Yeah, excited about that one. Um, Alabama. Alabama. Yep, Alabama. Uh, oh, that's Colorado, good. of course. I'm I'm yeah. I'm a huge Colorado Colorado fan now, right? I think everybody <laughs> yeah. is. I think everyone I, I agree. wants to see um them do well. So those are probably the the, the ones that I'm most excited for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um for me, uh obviously and you know it's about me, I'm a huge Notre Dame fan. Uh, I know I gotta be objective as a journalist, but uh right. <laughs> I've been a Notre Dame <laughs> fan since nineteen ninety three. It's hard not to. But um definitely looking forward to seeing them against North Carolina State, kind of their first real test of the year in terms of um uh, a, a team that can kind of match up with them a little more so physically than Tennessee State and, and Navy. So uh, first test of the year, obviously, Colorado, Nebraska, that was, you know, right. when we were growing up, that was a big time rivalry. And of course, you got the two new head coaches. And quick note um, on that one, everybody talks about uh, Coach Prime and the roster turnover in Colorado. Mm -hmm. They're not mentioning that Nebraska actually had the second most roster turnover. I think they got like... um. 50 new players that weren't on that roster last wow. year. Yeah. With, with their wow. coach, Matt rule. So, you know, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Utah yeah, versus that, Baylor. Be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Looking to see yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, Baylor coming off a tough loss two years ago, won the, won the big 12. And of course, Utah, um, two time defending PAC 12 champions. And then of course you mentioned mm -hmm. Texas versus Alabama. That's going to be huge as well. So probably those four yeah, games I'm really excited about. Yeah, yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. Yeah. Um. So, uh, back to the Pac-12 a little bit. This is something I thought was really interesting. So, the Pac-12, oddly enough, it's in its final year of um, existence as we know it. It may not exist next year, or it may right. have a whole bunch of different teams in it. Um, they may kind of swallow up the Mountain West, or who knows what's going to happen. Um, but uh, in this last year, it's the best quarterback conference in the country. And it's one of the deepest conferences. You look, you got defending Heisman Trophy winner, uh, Caleb Williams. You got Cam Rising at Utah. You got Michael Penix Jr. Mm -hmm. at Washington. Shadur Sanders at Colorado. Bo Nix at Oregon. Uh, revitalized DJ Yui Lele at Oregon State. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is mm -hmm. going on in the Pac-12? And why the heck did it take them so long to get things right? Maybe if they had gotten it right, they could have survived. Right, right. Yeah, I mean... I got no answer, uh, but I'm excited to to see the, the quarterback race, if you will. You know, oh, yeah. it's 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 a good time to to it's a good time for it to happen, if you will. You yeah. know, it, it's a, it's a good way for them to go out, kind of. <laughs> Makes you want to uh, put some pads on, and go catch some passes. Man, <laughs> honestly, no, honestly, no. It. I always have a little moment where I'm like, yeah, I could go back, but then. Part of me is like, man, I enjoy just being done. You know, yeah. I lived that life. I, I did it. I was, you know, blessed enough to get away with no significant injuries mm -hmm. and live my right mind and do the things that I want to do. So, um, I, I lived that life, and now, now it's fun to go back and just watch it and appreciate it and and, and reflect on on what I did. But it's Pac-12 got some teams, kind of got some quarterbacks, got they some sure quarterbacks do. out there. And, and you know what I was thinking? This is so odd, right? It's interesting how timing happens in life uh, in a lot of situations. Um, so the Pac-12 has been trying for years. And I guess the major reason that it fell apart is because it couldn't secure a new TV deal. And I was thinking about this. Right. If, if Coach Prime had gotten to Colorado one year earlier, they probably mm -hmm. would have been able to secure that major TV deal and the conference wouldn't have fallen apart. That 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 to mm -hmm. me is really interesting to think about. And now you've got just a, a total shift and a complete, I mean, we, we use the term realignment, but it really is a complete realignment in the college football world. And um, I just thought that was so interesting. Um, just, you know, how, how much of a difference one year can make. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I definitely think they would have got the funding for it. I mean, oh, yeah. Dion is, is doing, is doing crazy numbers. And mm -hmm. then the, he's Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders is a lot of pull yeah. for him right now. And so the Pac-12 might have been able to, you know, renew, if you will. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, remember, remember what I said that uh, uh, the Buffaloes, Colorado Buffaloes will win the Big 12 next year. I'm saying it now. Right. So nobody can say I'm what happens. Down too. Yeah, yeah. Write it down, man. I'm saying it now. Because I think with Oklahoma and, and Texas going to the SEC, 
I think that the, the conference is going to be wide open. And again, seeing what Dion is able to pull with the transfer portal and then the recruiting he's going to be able to do to add to the depth on the uh, offensive and defensive lines, I think they're going to be such a dangerous team, man. Um, before I let you get out of here, man, just in general, uh, uh, your thoughts, um, uh, you know, just how does it make you feel? I know you said that, you know, you you realize you, you were blessed to play for as long as you did. No major injuries. You're kind of done with it. But how does it make you feel when you, you know, you sit in front of the TV and you watch one of those barn burner games? Like what what goes through your mind? What goes through your body when when that happens for you? It, it's it's exciting, right? I'm I'm a competitor at heart. Mm -hmm. I love to compete. I love to just challenge myself. I love to just try to get better at all times. Mm -hmm. And then when the, those barn burner games are on, like you said, it just makes me think back to, to my career and mm -hmm. just you know watching watching the fans and just being on the field and you know knowing the play that is going to come before it's called and before everyone else knows what's going to happen. And mm -hmm. it's it's football is one of the best, if not the best, sport in the world, right? There's so much stuff that you can learn. Um, there's so many key points that come into play to make a play successful um, and to win a game. And it's, I love it. I love it. I love it. So as a, as a former athlete, I like to just sit back and watch these guys and, and just think like, man, I remember, I remember those days. I don't got to go back, but I remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, man, Ryan, thanks so much for taking the time to join us this evening, man. Definitely. Look forward to uh, talking to you again next week, kind of going through some of the results from this weekend and looking forward to some of next week's games, man. Um, go ahead, sit back Absolutely. this weekend, enjoy it, and uh, we'll talk soon. For sure. I appreciate you, Bruce. All right. And everybody, if you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, and that notification bell so you can stay up to date on uh, whenever new content drops on the channel. And uh, this will be the end of this one. Can't wait to hear from you. Can't wait to see you again. And I'm out. Peace.